So today we're going to look at some uh, shader basics in uh, Unity 3D. Um, so what exactly is a shader? A shader is um, a way to get your content from, from the, the CPU onto the graphics card and to get displayed on the screen. And it does that with two two small programs in it, a vertex shader and a fragment shader or a pixel shader as they're sometimes called. Uh, so all your assets are going to use a shader. They're all going to go through the graphics pipeline to get to the screen. Um, so in order to do that, all the assets have to become um, chunks of data effectively. So we've got vertices that get passed down through the uh, first program, which is a vertex shader. These then uh, through the graphics pipeline and our vertex shader uh, create triangles on the screen. These triangles are then passed onto the pixel shader and the pixel shader can uh, then uh, fill and populate the pixels actually inside those those triangles uh, that, that come out of the vertex shader. So a lot of people work in 2D uh, so I'm going to try and focus more on, on shaders with sprites but we'll hopefully if I get a chance I'll show you some uh, 3D stuff as well. We might even look at the sprites in 3D just to show you that, that 2D is 3D. So let's have a look at um, let's have a look at a sprite and how and how the uh, the graphics pipeline displays that. So obviously this is Unity. I've got a very simple uh, sprite on the screen as you can see. I've given given it a very easy to recognise texture, telling you it's a sprite. But what we've got on here, so if we actually pick the sprite. What I've done as well is displayed on the screen the actual um, vertex position data for each of the four points that appear on the uh, on the screen thanks to the graphics card, thanks to the uh, graphics pipeline. Uh, and they're all in relation to the center of the pixel. So wherever the sense, not pixel, sorry, the center of the sprite. So wherever that is on the screen, these these points are in, in relation to that. So effectively, these are what, what are called in object space uh, because their their coordinates are based or keyed off the center of this this particular object. In, in this case, it's a sprite. So if we look at that in wireframe mode, we can actually see the triangles that are built by the graphics card. You can even see the ones the fonts are using look. So as I say, even your fonts are using shaders and, and vertices to do it. And if we go to 3D as well, we can actually pan around and see that we've got, so from each of our four points, we've got two triangles. So obviously a triangle is made up of three points. So these first three points make this first triangle. So that's the vertex shader creating that uh, the data for that and then the second one gets these three points again and then creates this triangle then the pixel shader gets it and what the pixel shader does is effectively populate it with the texture and the colors and the lighting calc usually the lighting calculations that are in it you can do lighting calculations in the vertex shader as well but um, uh, they're not as though the quality is not as good although it is more performant to do it that way but we've not just got point data here in these vertices it's a structure that's passed so it's a list of uh, structures that come through to the graphics card to the graphics pipeline uh, so these are our physical positions on, in relation to the center of our model so if i let me just cover that again so if i move the whole uh, mesh that whole four point mesh to the right these in world space are actually at one actually at point 0.5 minus 0 0.5 because I haven't moved the Y but I've moved it across one um, uh, and that's at uh, 1.5 now over there um, so also to get the the, the data um, the texture data onto that onto that mesh we also have to pass in uh, data called UV maps and UV maps are just effectively how the flat texture is mapped to the vertices to the, to the shape that we're trying to render in this case it's a very simple shape it's just a it's just a billboard so um, it's pretty pretty simple stuff really so each one of these will be let me just move back to 2D so we can see <coughs> this is how I remember it in direct text but I think OpenGL um, they flip these coordinates which is not particularly brilliant It'd be nice to have a standard wouldn't it but we've all got our own ways of doing stuff uh, so in direct text 
uh, they'll be rendered in this way so the top left hand corner of your mesh will be zero zero bottom right hand corner will be one one and then uh, in relation to that so that's x one y zero this point is uh, x zero y one so that's how it manages to map those textures so when it gets to the pixel shader it interpolates between the points because obviously we've not we don't know what's in here so what it does is so for that very first line of pixels when it renders that line of pixels at that point there that's going to be uh, 0.5x and 0y and that's going to be 0.5x and 1y and that's how it then pulls that the, the, the texture out of, out of the actual texture and applies it to the, to the mesh sorry I had to pause it there um, <laughs> my dog's just come in the room it's a pain in the bum um, so I just had to put him out um, so we kind of got an idea now that we've got these these data structures getting passed to the graphics card so what kind of shaders do we get with with unity as it as it stands you know for free straight out of the box so if we get a blank empty scene we can uh, just grab a sprite put it on the screen so we got our default sprite material that comes with unity that's obviously using a shader as well um, Got lots of different ones. So if we have a look at this as it renders, I've actually got a, a script from my camera control. I'll just quickly show you this. Um, so you should be able to see now if my uh, screen magic stuff's working. Uh, the script. So basically, it's just a translation and a rotation uh, values there to be passed in, so we can change how fast we translate. You know, move through the world and rotate. And then basically on key presses, I can. I can then uh, translate or rotate the camera in whatever direction I want it to go. So, um, so that's what we're going to do. We'll have a quick look at this. So, what we can see using the default sprite shader. Oh, I think my camera's still on. I'm going to move to 3D space so you get a perspective. So, I can. You'll notice we can <coughs> view this from all sorts of angles. Yeah, as you'd expect anything to be rendered. In the in the world, but if we go around the back of it, it's still rendering, but all the information's flipped, so it's the wrong way around. And that's because this particular shader is using has got the culling mode switched off. And the culling's quite important. It's how the graphics card decides what triangles can be seen by the the camera at any one time. And if culling is off, both the front and the back of your ca um, triangles are going to be displayed which is great for a lot of things like sprites and particles and things that you want to be able, you know, like a piece of glass, things that you want to be able to see both sides of. But in most cases, you want you probably want that switched off because obviously you, you're rendering double the amount of triangles you need to render. Um, but what's also interesting about this shader as well is that I can also, if I get to the sprite, if I alter my alpha channel on there as well, it fades, in fact, I can fade it in and out. So that also means that this shade is using uh, alpha blending uh, to do that. If it didn't, then it wouldn't matter what the alpha channel is. It'd still show as a fully opaque uh, object on the screen. Uh, I'm just going to pause that, pause the recording. I just need to check again. Some more life stuff. Life's always getting in the way. Just a minute. Sorry about that. Should be uh, pure interruptions now. Um, yeah. So that's the regular default sprite. So let's have a look at. As you can see, we get these are my sprites that I've created here. Just to, we'll go through those in a bit. Uh, but these are the stock ones that we get with Unity. We get a, a default diffuse and a default material. So I think the default diffuse is the old legacy uh, lighting model, because in um, five point whatever we got the new lighting model. So that's I guess so we can still use all the old legacy uh, uh, sh uh, shaders and things in, in our older projects. This is the newer one, and then of course we've got the particle effects and the skybox. The skybox we're not going to look at. So let's have a look at the, set it to the default diffuse. You'll notice now that it's gone a bit dark, and that's because there's no, it's using the lighting model to, to light the, the, the geometry. Um, so if we have a look at lighting, and it's, we can, you can see that it's slightly dark because we've got like a it's not quite black, but we've got a you know whatever our ambient lighting is, it's using the ambient light to actually to light that. So if we put an actual um, light in the scene. So a directional light is now lit up. If we have a quick look at that, oops, in, uh, let's put my scene back. I'd like to have my stuff in the right place. Um, yeah, so if we have a look at that, 
in 3D. Now we can see we've got a light and that's the direction it's shining and that's why it's able to uh, to light that up. Uh, again if we now go back to our sprite and try and alter the alpha you'll see it's not it's a fully opaque it's not using any alpha blending at all so we can't fade it in and out. Uh, if we then try and rotate all the way around it should have what's called front face culling so only uh, triangles that are facing the camera will get rendered. If it was back face culling, only triangles facing away from the camera would get rendered, uh, which is useful in some in some instances, but we won't cover that today. Um, so that's what we've got with that default shader. If we look at uh, the other default material, it's pretty much exactly the same. It's just using the new lighting model, so it's got other it's, you know it's got other things you can apply in there, like the, all the emissive normal normal maps, high maps. You've got those in the old one actually, but there's, it does it. The calculations are slightly different, and it also applies some of the ambient lighting effects as that we get in the new in the new lighting model. So we have, um, and again, as you can't fade it, uh, front face culling. Um, so let's have a look at particle effect. Again, you'll see now I don't need the light now because it's not using the lighting model to do it. You'll also find that it's the culling's off, and also that. Do, 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 do. we can fade it in and out so it's using alpha blending as well so why would we want to we've got all these great shaders why would we want to write our own well all those shaders are great but we might want to do something a little bit more interesting with the with the with the with the, with the meshes so um, one example I thought of was maybe we wanted to have kind of like a water effect so we want to have this um, have the mesh basically at the, the top two points just you know oscillate wobble like a wave like a wave would so I thought wouldn't it be cool if we, we could do that in a shader you could do it obviously on the CPU you could do it in your C sharp scripts or whatever scripting language you're using in Unity but it would be more exp I think it'd be more expensive because all that processing is being done on the CPU you want to use that for really for game processing this is just a, a visual feature so if we can hand that off to the GPU that's great then the, we don't have to worry about it taking up CPU cycles it's all handled on the GPU obviously you can end up if you've got everything running on the GPU you could end up with bottlenecks especially if you're on you know low-end devices but these days we can we can fl throw a fair bit at the GP GPU now so let's have a look at um, the more uh, my river scene. Uh, yeah, I'll save that one. So I've created basically um, these. All they are sprites, and they're using um, a tiny. I've got created a little white pixel. It's literally one pixel by one pixel, and it's white. <laughs> Which is why it's got its name. So if we if we look at that, it's doing nothing. It's just rendering just as you know the default sprite render would. Uh, regular regular uh, mesh stuff it's got all the all the normal alpha blending and everything else in it but if we wanted to say if I flip that over to my new material my water material so we want it to be like like water a water effect oops I need to select the stuff and then add water you'll see now we're able to have a nice war effect. I know it's not massive high detail, but if you look at each one of these, you know, the the if we made them smaller, you know, so there were more partitions effectively, you could get a smoother, smoother look at it. But it's really just to demonstrate that what we can do with the shader really. So with this with this material, if we if we uh, if we look at the actual material itself, we can alter I've set it up so we've got uh, a few parameters there. So just like with the others where you've got your diffuse spe you know, and your specular and all the others in the defaults as a, well, mine's just got colour, uh, the texture that's going to be passed the usual tile and stuff, that, the tile actually affects how the UV map's used but again we're not going to look at that but you can, if you need to mess about with the UV map and, and, and tweak it a bit you can do it in your tiling uh, so we've got a frequency and amplitude so obviously it's a wave so how often are the waves coming so that'll be our frequency and the size of the waves that's that's going to be the amplitude and that's a, just a simple sine wave function in the shader we'll look at the shader in a minute to show you what the what we can do with the parameters so if we set the amplitude to one then we get a really big tall wave and the frequency we could say on oh, no, this and the ridiculous like five 
uh, move that back to one and then odd node to 0.5 or something so we've got at least something to look at and I can also because we're using alpha bl blending in the shader I can set the, the color to whatever I like I can also use whatever texture I like really in here so what I could do is if I change from the white sprite now it's going to go absolutely bonkers because the texture I'm going to use is on a different scale to this you'll see that I've had because these are one pixel by one pixel the scales are 100 <laughs> by 100 for each just to give me a decent sized um, sprite effectively so what I'm going to do I'm going to swap this out for, uh, for for that one I'm going to then quickly he says do that and then this, uh, it's, it's 3.6 in it I remember 0.36 either is it point three? Point four? Uh, point three, eight or nine or do. It's not perfect. There's, there's going to be gaps, but it's just to give the idea. Point three, nine, was it? So look, so yeah, we can use any texture we like to do this. So you could have a nice water texture. And again, even if we, if we wanted to go mad within the shader, we could even animate the texture that's inside the shader as well. But for all intents and purposes, let's have a, let's just, uh, Let's pull that back to what it was. Right, so I'm going to tone that alpha down a little bit. So if we have a look at that in the scene, so we've got some nice water. What am I on? Am I still rendering orthographic? So I'm going to go perspective. So that's my water rendering in a sprite. And it's actually really simple to do. Okay, I've I've got perspective. So let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the shader that does this. So we've got uh, the properties block at the top, and that's effectively these. Oh, where's my shader? Uh, these these parameters here. So you don't really need those there if you don't want to be able to edit it within the uh, unity UI you could just pass the values in in code if you really wanted to um, so that's what these are so that's setting up my color uh, the, the, the texture the frequency value and the amplitude and for each one of these uh, we've got a, a variable three where's the fourth one? Oh, there's my color down there so that those are the actual variables that are used in in the shader these just are mapped for the UI in unity uh, interesting thing is we've got um, you can set the location of your of your shader um, so if we go to change this you'll see now that I've got a uh, shader basics and my shaders are in there I've also got a custom I was going to show you what the custom ones look like but I forgot <laughs> so if I get back to get time I'll go back to that so the custom ones are basically the ones you get uh, you're going to build a new shader and it, what you get for default we'll have a look at that in a bit um, so yeah, so we've, that's how we've set our parameters up. And then we can say what kind of uh, render type it is. Obviously we want a transparent render. So the, the render type's just basically gonna put it, Unity manages everything in, in queues for rendering things in the right order. So obviously you don't wanna render your, um, your, your transparency first because you need to be able to rent, see the things that are behind it. You don't want them blocking those, those things out. So it's important to get them in the right render queues really so in this case using that I'll switch culling off we can play with culling actually in a minute we can see what it's going to do uh, the blend I'm doing is a source alpha uh, one minus source alpha so that's effectively it's a regular alpha blend if you set it to one one that's a, um, a an additive blend so you're basically saying whatever the texture is at the back multiply it by whatever the texture is I'm about to write onto it so that'll be a, a, an additive blend uh, there's also also multiple you can multi do a, a multiplication alpha blend so whatever the color is it'll multiply it by the color you're putting on it so obviously uh, if you have black which is zero you multiply any color by that it's going to give you zero otherwise it's going to multiply by the color that goes on um, uh, this color zero that I think is a, uh, what they call in in unity a soft a soft alpha a soft additive um, well again we'll look at those in a minute so in here we've got to declare what our vertex and fragment shaders are we're using the intrinsic uh, unity uh, CG um, file to give us um, some some structures that just ship with the unity uh, we're going to say we're going to use uh, shader model 3 so the target shader model 3 back in the days of XNA when I was writing XNA shaders and, and, and my old XNA blog it, a lot of my stuff was um, shader model 2 uh, a lot of the cards then were, were shader model 2 but most things now we easily 
six, shader model three, uh, right all the way up to DirectX eleven, shader model things five. Um, so we've got uh, the variables as I described all set up. We've got a, this vertex structure. Now this is quite an important structure. This is how when we pass our four points in. Uh, our four vertices, uh, one, two, three, four vertices, they come in and the, gra the graphics pipeline matches the position data, which is obviously our minus uh, 0.5 for top left, minus 0.5 again, top left, uh, and the UV. So those structures come in and get mapped into this into this variable. Um, we can then use that variable to pass data from the vertex shader. Yeah, we've just declared it there and told it it's called vert, and that's the name of my function. And then um, the data coming in from the CPU, basically from our, our, our from Unity, is in V, and what we're going to do is take this data, and that's all data in object space. So ver that vertex, if it's the top left-hand corner vertex, will be the position data will be uh, minus five x, sorry, minus point five x, minus point five y, um, and then we what we do normally is then multiply it by the matrix for the model and the view and projection of the camera to to place that that position in world space and that's how how basically we move these object space values into world space but what we want to do in the case of this crazy water uh, effect is to be able to manipulate the, uh, the only the top two vertices in our mesh so we've got uh, we look at the text chord for that and we know if the text chord is greater than 0.5 we know it's the vertex because we know we're working with a working with a, a, a um, a quad effectively just four points we know the top two are going to be the ones at the top and we know the UV values for that are going to be uh, for, for the Y UV values will be zero so when you know anything bigger than 0.5 we're going to then manipulate the Y position value on it and all we're going to do is run that through a sine function over time multiply by the frequency how often it's happening and then we're going to add um, vertex uh, the exposition of the of the vertex that's passed in in world in object space, and then multiply that by the amplitude. I'm just going to change that because I've just had an idea. Uh, dot Z, because um, obviously if you you could then even with sprites, if you layered them on the Z the Z position as well, you could get um, cr uh, waves crossing each other. So we can we can add Z as well there as well. So then we've got the vert. So what we do our vertex position data is then moved into world space and put in the pos variable which is then going to be panded onto our fragment shader <coughs> excuse me uh, we can then just pass the UV uh, map data into into the UV structure um, our fragment shader then just gets it and then based on the pixels it needs to render obviously we've moved we've moved the, the change in the shape of the triangles all the time um, so it's then just going to render the color of the, the texture and the color that we want to we've passed into my, at the moment's green, and to do that, so and that's it's really simple. It's just literally a matter of manipulating the vertex y position at the top two points. Um, so if we have a look at that, I wonder if we can render that in wireframe mode. Yeah, yay, that's cool. I can really like Unity. Um, so you can actually see now how it's manipulating the the values. And what we can also do, what I do love about the shader, especially now I've added the vert Z, is we could, let me, uh, should we run it actually and see it? Yeah, what's my camera in? Let's get perspective again. So that's, as I say, we've got a wonderful sprite, but let's try it with some 3D geometry. So that's a cube, regular cube. It's got no lighting on it. It's using the regular default material. Switch that to mine, and we've now got it because you've got it's additive um, alpha blending the, the channels and stuff. But you can see it's also working even on a cube. So with a bit of tweaking, we could actually create like a, a jelly, wobbly, watery. Um, volume I guess but it's not just working on a cube it'll probably work on so yeah the quad so that's what we were working on anyway with a with a sprite but we could also switch that to a sphere so now we've got this funky looking sphere so if we looked at that in the in the scene mode it's 3d you can see it's how it's manipulating and it's only affecting look 
the vertices that have got a, a UV value above 0.5 and again we could we could tweak and fashion and change that to, to get it to look better but hopefully you're able to see now the kind of stuff we can do with shaders the amount of control you've got over the geometry so if we did it with a plane again we could you could imagine you could use that as, as an ocean couldn't you or some kind of water effect if you really wanted to and you'll notice though it's only doing it for half of it and again that's because of the UV values we've set we could take that check off and have it apply to all of it in this case uh, but yeah, so that's what we've got going on there. We could then also flip it out and have a look at it as a cylinder. And again, we've got this lovely water ripply effect on the top of the cylinder. So effectively, any any geometry. Have we already had a look with a? I don't know we have. But yeah, so pretty cool. I do love shaders. <coughs> so let's have a look at. Um, Let's go back to looking at the stock shaders. Well, sorry, not the stock shaders, but what what do we get when we go to create a shader to start with? So I've got my test shader there, which is effectively the same as going create a shader, and then I did create standard surface shader. So that's going to give us a regular shader with. Uh, the line model already in there ready for us to use so we don't have to worry about doing line calculations again you can you can apply your own line model we won't cover that in this one we're just going over very very basic stuff there's unlit shaders which obviously like the sprite and um, the particle um, shader that's th that's not using the line model it's just pushing the color straight without applying any lighting <coughs> excuse me image effect shader so that's effectively any any camera at camera effects like depth of field, blurs, um, there's loads of things we can do with those again that's going to be another talk and then the compute shader which is awesome parallel computing on the GPU again another talk uh, so there's loads there's loads and loads of awesome funky stuff we can do with shaders so if I just pick a regular I'll leave it as a new surface shader uh, and then go back to my project yeah reload all because I've just changed it and added stuff to it so uh, the new surface shader uh, what it does, which I hate, and I can probably change it in Visual Studio, which well, probably can't because it's generated by Unity. These <coughs> Java light brackets, they really, really do annoy me for some reason. I don't know why, they're just brackets. But uh, yeah, really get on my nerves. Uh, nearly swore. Um, so you basically get uh, it sets up four parameters for you color, <coughs> texture, how glossy it is, the metallic, how metallic it is, just like with the. With the, the the, the base shaders that we get with with uni and all it's doing is setting up a, a thing called a surface shader so unity has this thing called surface shaders which are great so we can apply um, new uh, lighting models to these to these surface shaders and also it'll handle all the vertex stuff for us as well if we really want it to but we can override that as well if we, if we really want it to to do that so there's loads of flexibility in there so it's declaring a surface shader called surface it's using the standard line model and it's also saying that it's using full forward shadow so that's a full I think that's a forward rendering pipeline You've got forward and deferred again something for another talk but um, that's what that that marker's doing there this is targeting level um, shader model 3 uh, we've got our variables as usual as before we've got the structure as we described earlier it doesn't need to know the positional data because it's already sorted out within the vertex and pixel and fragment shader that the surface shader will use so in the surface shader all it's going to do is pass in the sets and now the albedo how metallic it is the smoothness and then unity does everything else for you so we can i'm just going to save that we can effectively just if i flip back to 2d and shaded so our sprite could probably now use uh, so I've got my, te my test material let's go back I'll show you that my test material is essentially exactly the same except it's got the horrible brackets why didn't I do that it's my OCD my old OCD kicking in um, <coughs> yeah so so it's exactly the same as the as the new says so this exact same thing and also you'll see that it puts it in custom so if we have a look at um, custom now, there's two, my test and new surface shader. Uh, I'm just going to delete new surface shader because we don't need it. Let's get an update that. Cool. So as, as we've seen, so Pake has got all the usual stuff. So I can now just set, 
it's a bit silly. Set the sprite to my test, and it's got the all the standard stuff, the, the, the same uh, parameters that come with uh, the the, sh the show that I create. Now you'll notice one, two, three. We've got four parameters there, but there's a lot more than oh, that's because it's using standard, not custom. El stupido. Um, so you've got color. Uh, the albedo, uh, smoothness, and metallic. I was just about to say because I thought that's what it did. Was it because it's using the standard line model? It's gone and, and set up the other um, parameters, but it's not, which is good because that would have been confusing. So we can alter the smoothness, and we can add a light in, and it will behave exactly the same. So another example of a, of, of a shader I thought would be uh, um, there was a friend actually not long ago asked me to if we could he could do something like when his ship bump or gets hit or bumps into stuff whether we could just get it to flash white when it got hit so I did like a really simple I won't say that very simple uh, shaders to do that so I've got you know be amazed my, by my super art I drew that I'm a, about as artistic as a turd I'm absolutely useless with any kind of modeling tools or, <laughs> or paint packages but I was quite chuffed with that so it looks almost like a ship um, so anyway so I've got this ship and the render it's using is my uh, flash material. Oh, sorry, the material is my flash material, which is using my flash shader. So if you have a quick look at that flash shader, so this is quite a simple thing as well. So what it's got is a color, uh, a main texture, and, a, and a, a fade factor, which is how much we want to fade fade the white in and out. Um, all the usual stuff. So we've got cooling off. Oh, we didn't look at that. We'll look at that in a bit. Back on the other shader, uh, and then the blend mode, um, which could probably just be opaque for this, to be honest. But no, no, we need it because we're going to we're going to fade the texture, aren't we? Um, so, and then you've got a uh, target. The variables are in there. Our structures are the same as before. Um, we've got the the vertex data. Well, one thing I didn't mention was app app database. That's actually a Unity structure. So that's been we get that from this, and that's uh, that's got all sorts of lovely stuff in it like um, vertex and text coord and lots and lots of other things you can google it there's loads of stuff in that structure uh, so and all we're doing is just taking doing standard stuff moving the vertex into the world into world position but in our fragment shader what we're going to do is we're going to get the color of the texture that we're rendering and we're going to lerp so we're going to do a linear interpolation of that tech of that color that we've got from the pixel by the color we want to fl the flash color we're going to use multiplied by its alpha otherwise it just fill the whole sprite um, uh, the triangles so we only want to fill the textures that have got uh, an alpha greater than zero and then we've got a fade factor as well so in order to do that we need to pass parameters at runtime uh, to fade factor to, to be able to change that over time so what I've done I'll create a flash on bash um, class um, behavior so there's a the speed of how fast it, it changes over time uh, the material that we're going to pass our value to and then the current flash value so when it starts I get the material from the renderer so effectively on my ship we've got a sprite renderer so this because I'm grabbing a renderer and not a sprite renderer or a mesh renderer it'll get whichever renderer it finds so it's going to find me that it's going to find the materials the flash mat so that's what how that's pointing to the flash mat and then in my update if my flash value is not equal to zero I'm going to clamp it between zero and one because we don't want to be um, rolling the value around so if we go um, you know we don't want value two passing down and we don't want anything less than zero going down so effectively my flash value minus the flash speed because we want to decrement it down uh, and then we just pass it to the to the to the shader by saying set the value the name of the variable we want to set which as we saw is dum 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 fade factor um, oh, oh, lost my script oh, that's because it's there no dopey one yeah so and then just pass it in and effectively on my collision enter all I'm going to do is set the flash value to one so that it knows it, it it's going to iterate so if we have a look at that running should actually see so I can't remember what I've set for my controls. Oh, yeah, so arrow keys to rotate, uh, arrow keys to translate as well. So if I bump into stuff, so now you'll see no sound, that was my sound effect, not an actual sound effect. So whenever I bump into anything now, oh, I know I'm bumping into stuff. 
because it's flashing. But we could change that to you know whatever color we wanted to do to have for that really. I wonder if that will work actually. Might have picked it up at runtime. Should do. Oh, no. So yes, that's pretty much that shader. So we can do lots of funky stuff in shaders. So uh, I said I was going to look at the the column, wasn't I? So let's go back to our river scene. So we'll run it. So at the moment the Colin's on, so we can see both sides. So let's get back to uh, what we showed the 2D. So if I just do, uh, I think it's front. That's going to test my memory, isn't it? Yes, and now oh, it's vanished. Yeah, and that's because yeah, my camera's over there. Let me just move my camera back to my rotation to zero. So that's front face calling. So it's going to call any any triangles facing the camera. I might have said it was the wrong way around earlier, actually, but it's not. But that's the way. So back face calling. It's going to obviously call the ones at the back. He says, hoping that it's. Yeah, that's because my camera's at blinking zero, isn't it? I need to move it back a bit. Make sure I'm on. Oh, the graphic's not going to help. <coughs> yeah, so that's why I was getting a bit confused. So, yeah, so now it's working just like the other shader. So, if we now go back to front, face calling. So, anything at the front, so it'll show the ones at the back. Cool. And then if we take it back off. And that's what I like about Unity. I can alter my shaders, and at runtime, it'll pick them up and recompile them, and that's just awesome. Um, so let's have a look at the. So if we took the alpha blending off, maybe. Oh, I think my graphics card's about to go nuts because Unity's locked up. No, that's bad. I'm going to pull off the pause. I think. Oh, this is not good. Technical issues. Might be caching actually. Please don't crash. Please don't be dead. Um, so hopefully that's not crashed. It's just a bit of a glitch. Um, yeah. So what we were going to do? We we're going to look at switching the blend mode off. So you can see now there's no blend. So it's it's fully fully. Um, fully opaque so it doesn't matter what we do now with this Let's make it more oh, I don't know why I picked green as a colour <laughs> anyway so if we then go multiply not much difference but what it's doing is multiplying that grey by the blue if we were to change Sorry, not multiply, it's additive. So if it's adding the colours, so if I wanted to go and move my camera background to something like red, ah, oh, it's because the clear flags is the skybox. I bet. Uh, okay. Thought we would give us a slightly different colour to that. Uh, so then we've got also the distance. I'm wondering it's because it's not in the pipeline, maybe. So so that's now uh, the soft blend, I think. It's giving us that blue against the grey. Set my camera back. Yay. Yeah, so that's with the call mode as well. So if I put that back to how it was, yeah, and that's about it really. That's just a quick test through shaders, basics. I hope I haven't confused you any more, and I've made things a bit more interesting. Any questions? Post them. Post them below, I guess. Thanks a lot.